in one of the little-known corners of Dependent Core Rising. There's an explanation of how ignorance about how the way you are breathing can be a cause for suffering. This is one of the reasons why we focus on the breath, is to bring knowledge to the process. So at the very least, and even though we may not be at the total end of suffering yet, we can breathe in a way that alleviates a lot of suffering. Because the breath has an effect not only on the body, but also on the mind. So try to be fully aware of the breath. Think about bathing the whole body. And you're in the midst of this big breath bath. The breath coming in, the breath going out, the more subtle breath energies that flow through the, the arms and the legs, different parts of the body. The more sensitive you are to these processes, the more you can use them to help the mind not create suffering for itself. This is one of the reasons why we not only focus on the breath while we're sitting, but we also focus on it while we're doing walking meditation and then trying to carry it into the rest of our lives. Because we need the breath. We need to be sensitive to this dimension of our awareness, of our body and our this general being, so that nobody else takes it over. In other words, greed doesn't take it over. Anger doesn't take it over. Fear, delusion. We don't want these things seizing our breath. We've got to reclaim our breath. That puts us in a better position when dealing with things in the mind. As you often notice, especially when anger arises, that the breath has changed. And that has an impact on the heart heart rate. <coughs> Can't talk tonight. The heart rate. The different hormones that are going into your bloodstream. In other words, the anger has taken over your body. And then where can you stay? If you ease in the body, you feel you've got to get it out. And for most of us, getting it out means saying something, doing something under the power of the anger. At times like that, when your sense of shame and compunction get pretty weak, and you often end up saying things that you later regret, doing things you later regret, things that are often in your, not in your own interest at all. So to get a handle on the anger, you've got to learn how to reclaim your breath in the midst of the anger. Breathe calmly. And whatever you've remembered from your practice of meditation about where your breath tends to have its sensitive spots, the spots that tend to seize up more quickly than others, the ones that cause chain reactions to other parts of the body. You can think of the breath energy like traffic in a city. You've got a traffic jam in one intersection, it spreads down to the next one, then down to the next one. And if you can't clear up that first traffic jam, you're not going to be able to clear up the other ones. In the same way, there are certain intersections in your breath energy channels that tend to get seized up first. It can be in the middle of the chest, it can be in the solar plexus, someplace deeper down in the abdomen. We all have our own specific spots. And so you want to be especially careful around those spots. Try to keep them open at all times. When anything comes up in the mind, you need to realize because of the hit of anger, hit of fear, greed, lust, whatever, go immediately to that spot and open it up. Try to keep it open and breathe in as calm a way as you can. This doesn't make the anger go away, but it gives you a better position to stand as you're dealing with the anger. You're not totally deprived of your ability to stay in the body. You've got at least one corner where it's okay. So try to maintain that. And then look at the anger, and look at your attitude towards the anger. When the Buddha talks about killing anger, he doesn't say you should feel guilty about having anger. The Buddha doesn't lay guilt trips on anybody. It just reminds you that 
it's not in your best interest to let the anger take over. In other words, if you can gain victory over your anger, it's worth a lot more than victory over the other people. This is one of the problems when we hold our anger in check, because we feel that we've lost out. And if we hold it in check unskillfully, that can lead to depression. So we've got to figure out some way. How can we think more strategically around the anger? And the strategy goes in two directions. One is looking at your assumptions. Which of your assumptions have been violated? And you have to ask yourself, in all fairness, was that a good assumption? And sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. If you can begin to see that the assumption was unrealistic, then you've got to turn around and deal with those assumptions. Ask yourself where they came from, why you're holding on to them. Well, they obviously cause a lot of problems. But if the assumptions seem clear and above board, then the next question is, how do you apply those assumptions given that the situation is not coming up to those assumptions? Is right now the time to speak, or do you want to wait for a little while later? Is right now the time to act, or do you want to wait later? And what would be the most skillful thing to say or do? This is where it's good to live around people who've learned to bring their anger under some control, and they can deal with difficult situations, they can deal with injustices, they can deal with all the problems that really need to be dealt with in the world in an effective way, without letting the anger take over. And you can see from their example how it's done. And if you can't live around people like that, well, try to read up on the Buddha how he dealt with difficult people. Read up on cases how to deal with difficult people. It's just because you're getting some control over your anger doesn't mean that you have to be a doormat. But it is important that you are very clear that winning a victory over yourself is more important than winning a victory over others. In this case, it's winning a victory over your anger. You're not losing out when you're not ex showing your anger or expressing your anger. You can think of it as a, a strategic move. The less you show your anger, the fewer people will know where your buttons are. They won't be able to press them so easily. There are a lot of ways in which life is like a poker game. You don't want to show your hand. Keep it close to your chest, and you want to keep a poker face so that nobody else can read you. So it's not just out of general niceness that you want to control your anger, but there are times when you've got to think strategically. can't let your anger show because it is a kind of weakness. But don't bottle it up. This is why we work with the breath. And don't bottle up the sadness that comes when you can't deal with the issue as quickly as you want. That too has a certain way of breathing that's not good for the mind, not good for the body. So try to read that kind of unskillful breath energy as well. This is why right concentration is such an essential part of the path, because you need the pleasure that comes from the getting into concentration, that the sense of rapture, in other words, the refreshment that comes when the mind settles down and there's a sense of balance inside the body and the relationship between the mind and the body. So this bath of breath really does feel refreshing, and it goes deep, deep, deep into the brain, deep into the heart, all the parts of your body that you tend to close off to any kind of outside influence. Well, when you close it out to outside influence, make sure you don't close it off to your good inside influences. Have your heart open to the breath. Have your deep part of your brain open to the breath. All the nerves that feel especially frazzled after you've gone through a day of dealing with difficult people, let them be open to the breath. 
can get a sense of what's the quickest and most efficient and most effective way of refreshing them. Sometimes it will require breathing in ways you never breathed before. Or think of the breath energy coming in at different spots that hadn't occurred to you before. When I was having heart problems last summer, one of the things I noticed was if I could think of the breath coming in the left side of my rib cage, it had a really good influence on the area around the heart. That was a spot I'd never thought of having the breath come in before, but there it was. It worked. And we're dealing with strong emotions, the same thing applies. Each of us has our own specific way of holding anger in the body, holding fear in the body, holding lust in the body. And you've got to figure out where are all the connections, and how can you undo them? What's this, the one spot that holds everything else together? Refresh that spot, and a lot of those patterns of tension and tightness can begin to be released. And make sure the energy channels going out your hands, going out your feet, are also open. So that things flow freely. And if there's pressure in any part of the body, remind yourself, like, that's blood pressure. Breath doesn't have to exert pressure on anything. It goes right through atoms. So if there seems to be a wall of pressure that you can't push the breath through, okay, you remind yourself, okay, you're not you've made the mistake of not pushing of, excuse me, you've made the mistake of pushing something else beside the breath. You're trying to push the blood there. You just hold the thought in mind. Breath can flow there. Don't push anything. But the simple thought of allowing can relieve a lot of the pressure. So do your best to get acquainted with the breath, <coughs> breath in it energy issues in the body, what it means for the breath to flow well, and be ingenious in finding new ways of solving new problems as they come up. This way, your, this area of your body, your area of your mind that tends to get closed off, is something you can start to reclaim. You can. Use that dimension of your awareness to your own advantage, your own skillful advantage. This is one of those meditative skills that is meant to be used throughout the day. So don't leave it on your meditation cushion. Take it with you. It'll be your support in times of need. <laughs>